What up, cucks? You asked for it, you demanded it, and so you got it. It's yet another episode of Hater on the Road, motherfucks. Hater on the Road. I'm actually in this, like, it's like a strip mall shopping center. It's like a fancy place, so nobody better get in my way here like this guy. But anyways, uh, today's video, someone just honked at me. I don't know if you guys heard that. I can't make this shit up, guys. So today's video is going to be about the primary reason why AW failed, right? Now, I know I just used the verb failed in the past tense, which would imply that it's over for them. But I certainly believe that to be the case. Now, does that mean that there is no coming back? Of course not, right? You can always bounce back. You know what I mean? Uh, last night took an L, but tonight I bounced back. You know what I'm saying? You can always come back. But I just don't see it happening for AW's case. The primary reason for this is, as I just said, the fact that AW throughout its history, which is now not irrelevant, right? They are no longer a new company, right? Now they're just, you could even argue they're an established wrestling company. So AEW now finds themselves in a very weird situation. They need, well, they need dead, I should say, to have made several stars by this point, right? People that you associate with AEW. Other companies have done this in a variety of different ways, sometimes even by accident, right? So I'll give you the example of one of the greatest wrestlers of all time and certainly one of the greatest wrestlers in modern history, uh, AJ Styles, all right? AJ Styles is a classic TNA guy. He became a star. Now, when I say he became a star, obviously, back in the day when TNA could only be watched, like, there was a time period where you could only watch it online. You know, I don't even know how they, how they like, kept their doors open during that time, right? But there was a time period where... Uh, TNA didn't have the fucking pay-per-views and you had to watch them online on their website. This is like back in the day, like 2000 and what? 2007 maybe? 2000, I don't even know. It was a, it was like back in the day, right? So um, I would watch that. The show was one hour. It was pretty decent. And then eventually they got a deal with Spike TV. So the people that were joining in and didn't know what the hell was happening, they wouldn't know that AJ Styles is their guy, right? But once you started watching the wrestling you would quickly realize that on nearly every episode, there was a guy called AJ Styles that was wrestling. And the way that Don West and Mike Tenay would talk about him would lead one to believe that this is one of their dudes, right? This is one of their main attractions, you know? Obviously, TNA had people like Rhino, Raven, Jeff Jarrett, Road Dogg, R-Truth. You had all these guys there that were like essentially the reason, Conan, you know? All, they were the reason why you might tune in. You're like, oh, let's see what the hell Jeff Jarrett is doing, right? But if you're someone like me, who's just a big fan of wrestling, you're tuning in just for the wrestling, right? That's the problem that I think AEW didn't solve and didn't understand. There are going to be people that tune into AEW because the young cucks are there or Cucky Omega is there. Some people are going to tune in because, oh, I heard Jericho is now in a different company. Of course they exist. But there is a significant amount of people that don't have the energy, the nerves, or the means to go and order New Japan World, so they have no fucking idea who these people are. These fans are just wrestling fans, motherfucks. They are just people that are like, oh, I think I'm gonna go watch this because I like wrestling, right? Keep this in mind. The fact that WWE gets like, let's say on average, two million viewers, because SmackDown gets like almost two million, I think. Um, and AEW gets, for the sake of math, half a million, that would mean that there's one and a half million people that probably don't know who the fuck Will Ospreay is, but that are big fans of people like Randy Orton, right? This is the problem. AEW doesn't need people that are fans of, of Will Ospreay or the Young Cucks or even Jericho. Like I said, when AEW signed FTR, I made a video, this is years ago at this point, in a video and I said, FTR is never going to draw a dime. Because everyone who is a fan of FTRs already watches AEW, right? You're not going to be someone that's like, oh shit, I heard F FTR is going on HAW, Hater Elite Wrestling, right? And you're going to be like, oh, now I have to watch Hater Elite Wrestling. No, that's never going to happen. FTR is not big enough, right? But FTR, in, in, in an amalgamation with everybody else that's in AEW, could get a few eyeballs. They didn't capitalize on this either. But the primary problem, like I said earlier in this video, is they did not make their own star. From the very first episode of AW, 
There should have been two storylines that are that, that are going to be told. Storyline one, Jericho becomes the champion, right? That's storyline one. You establish who your main guy is, Jericho. Someone of credibility and kind of, you know, kind, kind of like some sort of footprint in the wrestling world needs to be the champion. The absolute next step, same episode, maybe the match right before Jericho, right? You pick one guy. I don't give a flying fuck who it is. Obviously, if they were a smart company, they would have already done this by the first episode. You, you, they would have signed like, I don't know, Powerhouse Hobbs, Wardlow, one of these people that you've never heard of, right? Not Kenny Omega, not Adam Page, someone you've never heard of, right? That is good. You pick the best indie guy that is available and you have him have the second to last match and you put him in against like a Kenny Omega or something like that, right? And you have this guy and you have Kenny Omega have the best match ever and this guy beats Kenny Omega clean. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Oh, but Kenny Omega's a big star. No, he isn't, right? But he's a big enough star to put someone over in the first episode. This guy beats Kenny Omega re resoundingly with a finisher. As this match wraps up, it's time for the world title match. Jericho comes out. This guy's walking up the ramp. Jericho and this guy have a face-off. That's it. You've now established two things. Number one, once Jericho wins the match and becomes the world champion, you've established that Jericho is your guy. Number two, you've established that this new guy, let's call him Tex McGillicuddy for the fuck of it, right? Tex McGillicuddy is now your number one guy. So from this point forward, you make sure that no matter what happens, I don't care if you sign fucking The Rock and Cena on the same night, you make sure that Tex McGillicuddy is out there having a program, a feud, or hopefully getting a victory. Once you establish one guy as like your star, then you can build around that guy. You can bring in someone who's his friend and put him in a tag team. It doesn't matter. The fans need to know where this is all ending up, right? This is what they did with AJ Styles. Irrespective of any given juncture where wrestling was with for TNA, right? There was one thing you could be sure of. AJ Styles is going to be involved somehow. Even in his shitty times, even when AJ Styles was the prince of phenomenal AJ Styles, you knew as a viewer that the payoff here was going to be eventually AJ Styles is going to beat Kurt Angle clean, which is exactly what happened, right? That led to the main event mafia, which was even better, but you understand what I'm getting at here. The point is, at no given time did AJ Styles feel like he was lesser than anybody, right? Even if he, were, if he was in the, in, in the mid card, he was always someone that everybody knew was their guy. And as a result, there were many opportunities that AJ Styles got to be the champion. The highest of which is, of course, when he was champion, when TNA decided to go head-to-head -head against WWE. One of the biggest mistakes they made was to have RVD beat AJ Styles clean. It should have been the other way around. AJ Styles should have beaten RVD clean. To prove to the new viewers, because that day they got like 2 million viewers, to prove to the new viewers, motherfucks, that this guy, this guy is the real deal, right? That this guy is the person, he is the draw, he is the reason why you should be watching, right? So if you're tuning in, you're like, oh shit, there goes RVD. Oh, who's this other guy? I bet you RVD's gonna beat him, right? You have that guy beat RVD and that guy is made. Next week, people will be like, oh, where's that guy that beat RVD? And that's how you make a star. TNA did this. And you could argue they did this with several people to, vary, to varying degrees. AJ Styles is obviously the best example. But they, they made Samoa Joe, Daniels, uh, later on Bobby Roode, James Storm. They made their own stars. Eric Young, they made their own stars. AEW has not made any stars. Everybody else, like literally everybody that I know that is um, a wrestler in AEW, I know them from somewhere else, or maybe I should know them from somewhere else. Like, for example... You know, MJF, I know he comes from MLW. I just don't watch that shit. But I, I know that he was not, like, an, an AW original, right? Because they didn't even present him as such. They're like, oh, this guy's, like, a legend already. You know what I mean? Like, no. Make someone a legend. Make someone Mr. AW. They failed this. They failed this completely. Instead, what they did was they started off right where TNA started to decline. And that is when you had people like Val Venus whom I love very much because I talk about Val Venus a lot on this channel. Everybody knows I'm a big fan of Val Venus. But you shouldn't have Val Venus come out there and beat Christopher Daniels clean, right? That doesn't make any sense. If anything, what you want to show is that the guys in, in AEW, or in, this, in the case of the example, in TNA, 
are just as good, if not better, than the guys from the big company, right? This is a mistake that ROH made too, right? They had like Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin, who, when they were fired from WWE, were jobbers, basically. They were jobbers. They were both jobbers. They were fired. They brought them in there. They had them have these meaningful feuds with the Briscoes. What should have happened was they signed them and the Briscoes just squashed them to show that like, oh, you were jobbers there? You're a jobber here too, motherfucks. We're not worse. The Briscoes aren't worse than whoever the fuck was the champion then, right? That's what you should do. That's what gets people over. Wins are what get people over and moments. One of my fans in, in the last video made a good point. He said, Braun Breaker, I like him, he said, but he's not over. He's not catching on. And he's not wrong, right? Now, he was wrong, in my opinion, about the other part where he was like, it'll take years for this character to get over. No, it, it doesn't need to. The only way to get this over is to have Braun Breaker act like Braun Breaker and get the results that one would expect from Braun Breaker, right? Nobody expects Sami Zayn to beat Braun Breaker with a Miyagi kick, with a shitty little Miyagi kick, and then he hits the Haluva kick. All this guy does is kicks. So that's the problem. The problem is you got to get your stars over, and AW hasn't done that. They've, they've done it, I mean, I'll say a decent job at getting stars over that are not, you know, their stars. But what can you do, you know? It is what it is. Cuckolds.